the police department wants to be able to focus on community policing. Um, there's data that shows that there's economic benefits um, to ha not having people live in fear and in hiding. Um, the, the immigration authorities take care of um, immigration issues and I think we should, we should continue to do that, have, have them do that and focus, have our police department focus on the community issues. Okay. And Mr. Foster, please. Well, my concern is that I, I've seen the board as of late let national politics drive local politics. And I, I think that that is inappropriate. That's not the function of a town board in my view. I think we need to focus on Bethlehem first and, and the issues that are critically important to us. Being an inclusive, receptive, welcoming community are obviously core values that I share and want to encourage here in Bethlehem. However, I, I think symbolic measures, uh, the value of those are, are not, I, I just, I'm concerned about that because um, the board acknowledged in discussing the sanctuary city status that it would change nothing of current existing police practices. Um, so this was merely a some symbolic gesture. And, and I thought to myself, if it's so important to signal that we are a welcoming community, which Bethlehem, we are very fortunate, we are an incredibly welcoming community, is it also not important to reaffirm our commitment to other portions that are equally important? like a resolution that says the town board adheres to and supports the First Amendment, or the Second Amendment, or the Third Amendment. Where do we stop? Thank you. And Mr. Harder, please. The idea of a sanctuary city, I believe, prevents our police department from doing their job properly. A welcoming community is not the same as a sanctuary community. If there are people here illegally, they probably do fear for their safety and well-being because they're here illegally. The police should be able to do their job without their hands being tied or handcuffed, if you will. So sanctuary cities, I don't Oops. think, are a good idea. And Mr. Coffey, please. Um, I'm going to disagree a, a little bit with, uh, with Jim and George. First of all, I don't think you can ignore national politics. National politics affects us, and the resolution which was passed in February was a direct uh, result of what was going on uh, nationally, which, which cannot be ignored. Um, it was not, the word sanctuary is not in the legislation. I just want to be clear on that. It did reaffirm longstanding policy which the police support. Chief Corsi wrote a memo in support of it. The police support it. The idea is if somebody calls 911 because their house is on fire or they're a victim of domestic abuse, you don't ask them their immigration status. You wouldn't ask them if they filed their tax returns. Don't ask them about their immigration status. We don't want people to be fearful to call the authorities. But in no way did it say that we're not going to cooperate with ICE in fact, we don't even have a lockup here, so the whole issue of whether or not we would hand over someone to ICE is really not an issue because we don't deal with it. So yes, I supported it. It was not the so-called sanctuary uh, resolution, but I did support the intent of it. I think you've used your one card, Mr. Foster, so. No, I think that's for the super, I think that's for the supervisors coming up. <laughs> Usually I say this is the last question, but a lot of people in my organization are eyeing me, telling me there's a time constraint. So I'd like everyone just to take a minute and we will then just have our closing statements. And I would thank you all. I apologize when it said sanctuary. I didn't think it was the sanctuary city. I thought you were actually talking about something aviary. <laughs> So, on the closing statements, um, Mr. Coffey, you got the first straw for the first one. Thank you, uh, Ruth. I want to thank you, um, Ruth Dinowitz, for, um, for, for moderating this. I want to thank uh, Jim George and Maureen for participating. I want to thank everyone who came here. The fact that we have a standing room only mm -hmm. audience means two things. Number one, the Yankees aren't playing, and number two, <laughs> You care about this town very passionately, and you care about the future of our town, and you're concerned, and you wanted to see firsthand the candidates and hear from them so that you can make an intelligent choice on November 7th, 19 days from now. Unfortunately, only about 45% of registered voters vote in, vote in local elections. So first and foremost, please vote. Please exercise your, your constitutional right to vote. Please encourage your family and friends to vote. And yes, I hope that you vote for me. 
Um, it's an important election year. We're losing three town board members come January. John Clarkson, Julie Sassel, Giles Wagner are not going to be on the town board. So we need to make sure that we have people coming in in January to continue the good work of our town. A lot of people think our town runs on autopilot. It doesn't. There's a reason why we have good fiscal practices and we have great town services. That's because of the strong stewardship of the current administration and town board and because of the fantastic um, staff that works here. So if you like what's going on, you like the direction of your town, please vote for me. As I indicated, I'm not on the Democratic line. There was a paperwork issue followed by a lawsuit. We're not going to get into that tonight. We're going to talk about issues. But I'm proud to say I'm supported by the Bethlehem Democratic Committee. I'm supported by Bethlehem Indivisible. I've been endorsed by New York Progressive Action Network, supported by the Working Families Party. And today I learned I got the endorsement of the Capital Region Women. So I'm very proud for this backing. And I'm confident that when you go to make your vote, you're going to set aside politics, set aside the issue with the ballot, and vote for the best person who's most qualified and would be best able to lead and work collaboratively with the other town board members. Thanks again for Thank coming. You. And Mr. Harder, please, your closing statement. If elected, I will work to inject a level of sanity to the policies governing future land use and development in the town. I will start by taking the pulse of affected neighborhoods to assess the impact potential development would have on neighborhood character and quality of life to avoid detrimental effects on homeowners and rural landowners. I will overhaul the town's zoning ordinance to incorporate these considerations to ensure development will not materially alter the character of existing neighborhoods. Finally, I will monitor the decisions of our planning and zoning boards to ensure our zoning code is enforced rather than ignored or circumvented. The Working Families Party policies of the current administration have incrementally made our town a less desirable place to live and have deteriorated the quality of life in Bethlehem. They have nonchalantly laid to waste green spaces, wetlands, and wildlife habitats throughout the town and have failed to promote green and sustainable design and construction practices. Please remember, I will always be your voice in town government and I will zealously work to preserve quality of life in Bethlehem. We must all stand together and turn out to vote in record numbers to return competence and integrity to our town government. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Foster, please. Thank you. Uh, like Dan, I would also like to thank each and every one of my candidates, uh, fellow candidates this evening, as well as everyone in the audience. Thank you for taking the time to come a, become a more informed voter. In closing, my question to you is why are we here tonight? I think the answer is because each of us hopes for and wants a better Bethlehem. We may not always agree on how we accomplish that. However, let's at least have a full, open, and respectful discussion of the issues before us. That is what I can promise you will have if I am on the town board. Regardless of your political affiliation, I will listen to and respect your opinion. For example, since 2001, I've been responding to emergency calls in this community, and never once have I checked the political party of someone in need. Similarly, if I am fortunate enough to have the privilege of serving on the town board, I will make sure to respond to and listen to every resident, regardless of their background or politics. As a community, I believe we are better together than we are apart, and we need to get away from this notion that disagreement and debate is somehow unhealthy. Disagreement and debate is, in fact, the lifeblood of democracy, and we must restore this to the board. I invite each of you to join me in working together to have those discussions and once again listen to one another, even if we may disagree, and I'm sure we often will. But let's, get, let's not let our differences continue to divide us. Let us instead recognize that our differences are, in fact, a strength. In fact, different viewpoints and perspectives are perhaps our most valuable asset as we face the many challenges facing Bethlehem. I am confident that with your support, we can work together to preserve and improve our community for the future and for future generations. Thank you, and please vote November 7th. And Ms. Cunningham, please. President Bush spoke today about the importance of democratic citizenship, and it's living and breathing right here. I'm running for Bethlehem Town Board because I think we need to take a hard look at the future and to try and find a balance between economic growth our quality of life, and our incredible community character that we all love. 
I believe I have the track record to do this with a master's degree from Yale University, a bachelor's degree from the American University, and over 20 years of experience in nonprofit management. I'm running because I'm passionate about this town, about improving on what we have, working collaboratively, listening to residents, welcoming newcomers, respecting longtime residents and landowners, supporting our local businesses, and championing the work of our dedicated town employees and police department. I'm running because I will focus on solving problems, not creating more. I will work on fostering community discourse rather than stifling it and I will work on helping the town set a strategic vision for the future. I focused my whole career on helping communities throughout the Hudson Valley and actually in many countries around the world become more accountable and sustainable. And I hope to do the same for, for Bethlehem. I'd like to see Bethlehem be, be a leader and a regional model in areas of smart growth, strategic planning, and government transparency. I'm motivated and qualified to get, help us get there, and I think I'm the one to do it. I want to thank you all for coming tonight, and a special thanks to the League of Women Voters, the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce, the Capital Area Council of Churches, and Spotlight Newspapers for organizing this display of civil engagement, or what Bush said, democratic citizenship and democracy in action. So thank you, and good night.